Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Channel 71 candidate interview. I am here with City Council at large candidate Emma Zumas. Hi, everybody. Emma is running for City Council at large, so that means she'll be on the preliminary ballot uh, coming up on September 12th. And if all goes well, she'll also be on the ballot on November 7th in November. So if you like what you hear from her, plan ahead to vote in both of the elections. And this is a series of candidate interviews we're doing that we hope will include many of the candidates. So if you are a candidate and you would like to be interviewed here, feel free to reach out to me at walthamdata at gmail.com. So Emma, I want to kind of ask a tough question to start off. This is the same thing I asked Emily. Um, you're a first time candidate. There are 13 candidates for six positions. Six of them are incumbents. Do you really think you can win and why? So you definitely did start off on a hard note. Um, I It's taken me a minute to think about this and I'm probably supposed to come off as cool, confident, and collected. But the reality, I think, is a little bit more nuanced than that. I've spent the summer knocking on doors and talking to people all over Waltham. And I can tell you that people are ready for change, right? And I've had really positive conversations across the whole city. I haven't left a single conversation thinking, wow, I stand no chance. On the other hand, I'm basically a nobody. I'm just some random mom standing on someone's doorstep. Uh, other candidates have like decades and decades of experience and name recognition. But I can tell you as a parent going through the exhausting years of COVID with young kids, for a parent of young kids to be getting involved in municipal governance means I am really serious about this. I'm not doing this because I'm bored. Uh, my parents instilled a fierce work ethic in me and that combined with a good dose of stubbornness and a core belief in the greater good, I'm going to give this all I have. This is hard. I've done hard things before though, um, including having both of my kids during grad school, one of them with a major medical condition. And so I am no stranger to challenges. I'm doing my best to get myself in front of as many voters as possible. And I'm so grateful to those that are helping me, like you all, you know, getting my name out there to WCAC for getting names out there. The friends who have let my kids come hang out with theirs so I can get out and knock on the doors. The person who sent me the email at the exact moment I needed it the most, right? With a dose of encouragement. And so all those little pieces put together, I think it's going to be a, a good challenge, but I'm ready for it. That's great. And since a lot of people are just getting to know you, can you just sort of give us your top three issues or top three uh, reasons that you're running? Those are slightly different questions in my mind, like the reasons okay. why I'm running and then my priorities. So mm -hmm. Want to go the priorities? Yes, first. let's hear your priorities first. I feel like I have over the past couple of years gone to a number of public input meetings and I feel like a bit of a walking cliche because I start them all exactly the same way. The way I start them is a big part of how I've shaped my priorities and that's that I work in public health and the health of all of our residents is incredibly important to me and definitely sets the bar for what I hope to do. With this, my overarching priority is that I'm trying to bring a public health perspective to our municipal governance. Um, I think that it's lacking currently in Waltham. We know that public health is way more than just COVID. And I really see a lot of ways in which we could be improving the health and well-being of all of our residents that are um, really inexplicably tied and, and founded in public health. So that looks like a huge one is making sure that our streets are safe for everybody, right? I get, I have young children, I experience the world often with them in tow. And so making sure that our kids can get safely to school, they can get safely to the amazing playgrounds we have. We make sure that we're addressing the rat infestation, right? These are all tied to public health, that we have good quality um, public education, right? Um, my kids are in first and third grades. They just started school this week and we're invested in the Waltham Public Schools for the long haul. And we know that education has so many um, downstream effects on health. Climate resilience, we need to really be making sure that we're shoring ourselves up again. I see it's very much through the lens of our, our younger generations, right? What world are we giving to them down the road? So I live on the south side. My street has no shade trees, no public shade trees. It is incredibly hot there. So we need to make sure that we're... Um, 
reducing our urban heat island effect, right, by planting street trees. That also helps to promote climate resilience by absorbing stormwater runoff. Um, we need to be protecting our green space in North Waltham so that we're maintaining that tree canopy. It means things like supporting our farms. Food access is huge to me and is huge in public health. So make sure we're supporting our farm and our food pantry, um, making sure that we're really tackling the housing crisis. We know that housing affects our health in so many ways. And so I'm from what I can tell, a big supporter of the MBTA Communities Act, right, to allow for that greater density around public transit. I know you all have talked a lot about that on the show, um, and it's making waves across the Commonwealth. So those are a few of the ways that I see public health really lifting up all of our residents, right, as well. Today happens to be the International Day of um, Drug Overdose Awareness. And so making sure that we have a robust public health department. We do have a health department. Um, I'd love to see them grow and really be able to play an active role in addressing a lot of these issues that some of the health departments in our surrounding communities do. We just got an email that went out, I think it was today, saying that the farmer's market, which has been pretty much all run by volunteers, they're all looking to step you know, away from this as they're moving on to other phases of life. Is that something that our public health department could help on or support? Maybe not take over fully, but, and I don't want to put any words into the mouths of any of the organizers, but there are ways in which municipal governance and city departments can really help, again, the health and well-being of our residents. And so that's like one big bucket of the what, but then in public health, we know that the how and the why are really important. And so those are some of my like second and third tier priorities, but necessary components of making sure that we're improving the health of all of our residents. We really need better planning. You all have highlighted this a number of times. Um, we have had one senior city planner, right? She retired a couple months ago. We haven't filled that position yet. We don't have a master plan. Um, we had a number of meetings at which I spoke at my ward master plan meeting in the fall last year, almost going on a year, and nothing has come of that, right? There were some really amazing ideas that came from our residents, and it's disappointing to see that hasn't moved forward. We all, as residents, put our time into that and our energy. City council showed up and listened, and then where does all that rich information go? And we also just really need to bring everybody along with us as we hopefully try to make some positive changes for Waltham going forward. And that means communication. You all at Channel 781 have really filled in a big gap with our, losing the, the Tribune, right, um, the newspaper. And I think people want to know more. They want to feel like they're engaged in what's happening in their city. They want to learn about what programs are happening. They want to learn about, you know, public meetings and a new community-based organization that's doing X, Y, or Z in this part of the city or a way to get in touch with other folks. So communication is also really important to me. And we are a very diverse community. That's one of the things that attracted me to Waltham and our family. And so we really need to think about how we're communicating to all of our residents, not just the traditional ways in which the city has historically communicated. So those are public health, planning, and communication, I think, are my, my big three. You said that your big, your top priorities are not necessarily the same as your reasons for running. So what are your reasons for running then? Good question. And my reasons for running are really twofold. And it's my kids, um, my kids and all the kids of Waltham, really. My kids go to the dual language school, which is for folks who may not be aware, it's a Waltham public school. It's an elementary school currently, but it's supposed to go through eighth grade, K through eighth grade. And it's a um, Spanish immersion program. And so starting in kindergarten, they start off with 90% of their instruction being in Spanish. And then each year they go dialing up the English a little bit until third grade, where it gets to be about 50, 50%. And through that, I've really been paying attention a lot more to what's been happening with the schools in general in Waltham and with our dual language school in particular, and really seeing some ways in which what we say our priorities are don't seem to be lining up with the actions that um, the city is taking. And so the dual language school is one of the huge things that has gotten me to pay attention and run on. And also our streets. Again, I pretty much go everywhere with my young kids. And so I really want to make sure that not just my kids, but all kids and all of us in general have a safe way to get around the city. So they're like tied into my priorities, but the real reasons for like getting me to do this are things that I see as 
having a big return on investment for a lot of people, but in very direct ways to how we experience the world. So uh, the dual language school is something that's been discussed a lot in the school committee, but not all of our viewers necessarily know why it's an issue. Uh, as I understand it, they are going to be moving, but where they're going to be moving is still an open question. Can you just catch us up a little on what's going on with that? Sure. So a little bit of background. Um, the school, I want to say their first year was 2017 and again was designed as a K through eight school with four sections per grade level. When it started, as with any new program or school or department or anything right there, it takes a while to get things up and going. And so the first temporary home that they were given was at 510 Moody Street, which is the Waltham Cultural Center, also Waltham Rec Center. And so each year they've gone adding one grade. And so as that has happened, they have run out of space at 510 Moody Street. They currently have the whole top floor of the building, and that holds two sections for K through five. The oldest kids in the school this year just started seventh grade. So once that transition happened, those they had they had to find a place for them. And that was at Kennedy Middle School. So sixth and seventh grade dual language students are at Kennedy, but kind of in a, a track. It's not a full dual language curriculum or and they're not part of the school anymore. So in addition, it's a very popular program. There's a lottery to get into the program in kindergarten because it's Obviously, I mean, it's an amazing bilingual, bicultural experience and education, and it is phenomenal. And so in trying to figure out where the next home for dual language school is, a number of questions have been brought up across the city. The first place that was brought up was the current high school, so 617 Lexington Street. For a number of reasons, our school community didn't feel like that was an appropriate choice. Half of our community essentially lives on the south side. They'd be zoned for Stanley and Whittemore Elementary Schools. And a number of those families are our Spanish dominant families who are more likely to have access to one or no cars. And with a lack of public transportation in Waltham as it exists, especially connecting North and South Waltham, it's very hard for families to get their kids up to the North side of Waltham to, if it were at 617 Lexington Street. So then the question came of, would we have it at McDevitt? That could be another option. That was much more amenable to the families of our community. Not much has happened over the summer. The school committee has been dealing a lot with the superintendent search. And so it kind of was left in the spring as looking for more information, pick it up in the fall. And so we don't know where we're going still. So in your first answer, you said you were kind of a nobody, but it sounds like, no, actually, you, you're pretty involved in the community. Besides the dual language school, can you tell us more about how you've been involved in the Waltham community and what you're, what you're most proud of so far? So we moved here in the middle of the pandemic, and we were about to start the 2021 school year. And two weeks after we got here, there was a school committee meeting where they were going to be making some decisions or sharing information with the broader school community about what was going to happen that year with COVID precautions. Precautions. And so I went to this meeting literally two weeks after we had moved here and it was jam packed. I was not planning to speak by any stretch of the imagination. I was going to listen and learn and just like figure out what was happening and heard some of the less rooted. So again, I work in public health, right? And while I may not be in infectious diseases, I very much pay attention. And one of my strengths, I think, is that I can critically evaluate literature. I am trained in research methods, right? And so even if COVID is not my content area of expertise, I have been able to follow along and like pay attention to what's been going on. And I felt like a lot of what I was hearing, the public comments at that meeting did not resonate with what I knew as a public health expert. And so I, f I actually spoke at that meeting literally two weeks after we'd gotten here. That and then the next election cycle there, I got really interested in going to these public meetings. And so I've gone and participated and spoken at a number of them, school committee meetings, the master plan meeting. I was part of the 240 Beaver Street land use meeting, pedestrian Moody meeting, the housing notification meeting. And through that, I've had actually my proudest moment, I think. So for a parent of young children to go to a lot of these meetings is challenging. They're often in the evenings. I often have to bring my kids with me. If I want to be able to go to these and participate in the public process, public input process, it means they're along for with the ride. After going to a number of these, especially the school committee ones, my older son spoke at one of them. He knows that it's hard for me to speak publicly. Um, and like we talk about it and we share about it and 
how he would feel about it. He saw a couple of classmates speak at different meetings. And then he decided one day that he wanted to get up and, and share his thoughts. And that was for me, the thing that I'm most proud of, because at some point we won't be here, right? Our generation will have mm-hmm. moved on. And so to be able to teach the next generation about the importance of using their voice, right? Um, And hopefully for good, but sharing their thoughts and their opinions and putting themselves out there is probably what I'm most proud of. A couple of other things that I've done outside of the schools is I'm involved with Critical Mass. It's actually an international group. So we have the Waltham chapter here and they bring awareness to lack of safe pedestrian and bicycling infrastructure. And so I've been participant since the first first ride a year ago. um, And that has been really huge for me to feel like I'm taking steps towards improving safe streets for all users. And then something that I recently got involved with is trying to start a community fridge here in Waltham. Food access and nutrition in general are very important to me. And Waltham is no stranger to that as many um, communities across the country are experiencing food insecurity. Um, It happens here as well. And so wanting to make sure that I'm trying to use my expertise and my privilege to make the place better for everybody. So those are some of the things that I've tried to get involved in. Having been to these meetings, you met um, and seen what the re what people are saying, what the reactions are to what you've said. What do you think would be the biggest barriers if you do get the job? What do you think would be the biggest barriers to working on the issues you want to work on? Honestly, I think a lot of that depends on who else gets elected. So I could see it going a number of ways. If there isn't much change in the, like the balance, not necessarily individuals, right, but kind of the balance of folks who have been on the committee and done their service for a number of years and some of the newer faces who are trying to bring some new ideas in, if there's not much change again in kind of that balance, I think that'll be harder, right? I, as a, as a voter and a resident and someone who's tried to pay attention, I see a lot of resistance to change and for reasons that I don't think are always very clearly articulated, change is hard. It's hard for me. I'm a person who likes routine and predictability and stability. So like I definitely think that change is hard. Um, but I think that's where the communication piece really comes in of making sure that within city council, we're communicating and having productive conversations about why change needs to happen and doing some educating amongst ourselves, as well as then when a decision is made out to the general public. So I think one of the biggest barriers is that resistance to change. And I think as someone in public health who's used to dealing with not often having the funds you need to do the things you need to do, and so having to really be skilled at prioritizing, that's a strength that I think I could bring. I can usually find the good in everybody and finding the ways to work together. I like to think that I can find a common ground with just about anybody. I'm doing this because I'm serious, right? And I'm, and the, my motivations for running are because I, I want to create the change for my kids and all of our kids to have a healthier world. So uh, in terms of finding common ground with people, and you say it depends who, who else is on the council. Well, there may be on the people on the council who say, well, you've brought up health in as your priority over and over, but that's not the city government's job. The city government is not responsible for making sure people are healthy. They're just responsible for giving out permits to, you know, help food permits to restaurants and picking up trash. But all these other things you're saying are not priorities. How do you find someone common ground with someone like that? And how do you explain why you think the city government should be thinking about public health? I think that is a fantastic question, actually. And I think this actually comes back to a lot of what I have seen and why I think someone with my perspective is important. And you're 100% correct. I don't think any elected official, so, and by that I really mean like mayor or city council should be in charge of the health of any of our residents. However, I do think we should be in charge of creating a public health department that does do that, right? And currently, so I happen to work for a public health department in a surrounding community. And I see a lot of ways that they are able to think about healthy eating and active living. They're able to have programs for substance abuse, for mental health, for um, literacy campaigns for children, right? For all these things. And that's not the mayor or the elected officials doing that. That's the health department. But they have to operate in in an environment, in a context that allows that to happen, to have the funding to have that happen, right? For their programs, to have the funding for their staff, for all those things to then have them be the experts at the health. I'm not a traffic engineer. I'm not a city planner. I'm not a director of public works, right? I'm not a history conservationist, 
That's why we have boards and city departments that are experts in those things. We need to fund them and support them to do what we're paying them to do, right? To do the things that we want so we can have the basic city services, again, to lift up all of our residents. And so 100%, we should not be the ones saying what is healthy for people, but we should be creating the context, the environment for those experts in our city to do that work. So that's all my questions. Is there anything else you think I should ask you? I will just say the other piece of this um, that I've really enjoyed this whole experience, um, I've enjoyed lots of parts of it, but the one part that I've really enjoyed is having the conversations with people and being out knocking on doors. And I very, I've, if I've knocked on your door, I've probably said this, I very much view this as a relationship building exercise. Again, I'm not doing this because I'm bored. I'm doing this because I'm serious. And so for anybody out there, Please reach out if you have a question, if you have a concern, if you have something that you really love about Waltham that you want to see more of, right? The things that I'd love to do if I actually do get elected is have monthly office hours, essentially, right? To have kind of an open door policy. Often in my mind, when I think of this, I'd like it's at a rotating playground across Waltham so that parents with young kids can feel like it's accessible to them. I welcome the input. That's what I'm here for. I'm not here for myself. So I'll just add that. Thank you very much. Emma Zumas is running for city council at large. The, so you can vote for her if you like what you've heard on September 12th, and then hopefully also again in November. Emma, thank you very much for being here. Thank you so much for the opportunity.